Welcome to the Collaborative Podcast. I'm your host, Spencer Krauss. Our guest today is Ido Cedar. Ido is the CEO of Anitra, a company that makes a wearable device to help uh, combat anxiety. Ido, welcome to the pod. Hey, Spencer. It's great to be here again. Great to have you again. So last time we talked, uh, you told me a little bit about your wearable, and then we talked a bit about uh, some of the somatic uh, therapy you do and dance. And it was a really good conversation. And um, I, was, I was just kind of excited to keep tracking the progress of Anitra and, and sort of see where, where you yourself are at. And uh, yeah, what's new on your end? So maybe we'll do a little, um, a small, re- a short recap uh, for audiences that, that uh, haven't been, haven't heard the first podcast. So what we do is uh, uh, we are about reducing stress, reducing anxiety. Uh, uh, we have a wearable, We're, we've built, created a wearable that sits at the waistline. And when you feel stressed or you want to get through something uh, uh, with less stress, uh, uh, like a, a spe- special situation that you know that stresses you, or just generally you feel stressed or you feel that you need to focus and you can't because things are, are, uh, are, are just noisy for you from inside or from outside. Uh, and, and it works on the basis that um, uh, similar to mindfulness uh, practice in the sense that it helps you focus uh, your mind into the here and now. And it does that through vibrating with your breathing. So when you turn it on, it starts vibrating, synchronized with your breathing. And you get a few effects there. You get the effect of having connect, being connected and aware of your breathing that focuses the mind. You also have the, the vibration that focus you in the here and now through your body, and what we what we call somatics. And and uh, the third is that the vibrations in themselves are soothing uh, and placed around the belly. Uh, uh, they, they create a soothing effect for, for quite a few people, actually. And I will tell you about our pilot in a, yeah, in a second. I remember you liking it a little bit to a purring cat last time we talked, which was an analogy. Purring cat. Like a, that's good. The purring cat. That's thank you for that. Uh, purring cat that's synchronized with your own breathing. So it's really a purring cat that's really there for you. Um, and I, I want to. I, I just and I also want to say another thing is that um, you know stress today is really on the rise, uh, and the latest poll from the American Psychology Association show uh, uh, they showed that twenty seven percent of Americans. Uh, uh, feel so stressed that they find it hard to function. So they, they, they find it hard to concentrate, uh, uh, to make decisions and other things. That's, that's uh, an APA poll. So we know stress is on the rise. It's a big problem and we want to be part of the solution. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. That's awesome. Well, uh, I'm glad you're doing it. <laughs> I know I could certainly use help with stress myself. So. Uh, yeah, grateful, grateful people are working on it. And I mean, we talked about this last time too, like there's different ways to deal with stress. Um, you know, there's meditation, uh, there's medication. And I mean, none of those are obviously always practical or, or good for every situation. So it's, it's good to have kind of a device solution being worked on. Now that actually, okay, so that brings me to my other question, which is I mentioned Apollo Neuro, which is another wearable that purports to fight stress. And I'm kind of curious, uh, what does Anitra do that Apollo doesn't and vice versa? Like, how are the products different? Because just to like an idiot okay. like me looking out from, or looking in from the outside, I'm like, ah, these look similar. So to be honest, I really, uh, uh, um, I, um, when it, like, um, uh, what's the opposite of patting yourself on the shoulder? It's the opposite of patting myself on the shoulder where it comes to Apollo Neuro because until un, until uh, a year ago, it wasn't available to purchase in Israel, I don't think, where we are based. And now it's it just costs a lot of money. So we haven't had the opportunity to purchase it and try it ourselves, which we, we, which we should do. And we did try a lot of other devices. But from what I understand, Apollo uses uh, uh, conscious to subconscious uh, uh, um, uh, tactile stimulation that they've researched in the lab uh, in their own studies that they come, they come from Academy, the, the founders, uh, and they've shown that this, this helps reduce stress, helps sleep better, helps reduce stress, all of these things. So, so it seems like a great product. Uh, where we are different 
is that Apollo Neuro is, is stimulating uh, according to what they found out in their research that helps uh, that help people re uh, uh, relax, reduce stress, stay calm, et and etc. What we do is we uh, use uh, already a, a, something that's been proved scientifically, which is focusing on your breath, and we've augmented that through vibrations, and the vibrations are synchronized with your breathing. And 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 the interesting thing is that a lot of uh, uh, people that are on our pilot trials on our studies, uh, they tell us that even when the device is not on them, they can do the focusing on the breath and imagine that the device is there, uh, even when it's not there. So they're actually also uh, uh, gaining um, access to something that doesn't need a device. And 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 I think and this is where where we really want to be. Uh, is is getting people to not like not getting people addicted to uh, uh, devices, but to get them, you know, to use the device for a few months, get better, learn some tools, uh, um, uh, make make a like have a have a track, have a, a course where they where they learn what gets them stressed and they start dealing with those, and then they can put it on the shelf or give it to a neighbor or a friend or family member. Uh, or or, yeah. or have it there when you know or or have it there when 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 they need it again you know because we all we all go through trials and tribulations in our lives uh, uh and and so there are times where we need more support yeah that makes a lot of sense so it sounds like the difference is that um anicha is focused on breathing whereas the apollo product as you understand it it's more of like an open loop so it's it sends a signal based on Kind of a predetermined pattern that isn't influenced by the user uh, or any kind of biofeedback they 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 uh, say that uh, what they say is that they uh, uh they re replace touch so their tactile stimulation was designed to be like somebody that's touching you that's comforting you with oh, physical touch so you can say that they are doing the somatic part of what we're doing they're doing the vibration they're doing stimulation which is uh, what we call the somatic uh, side of, of Anicha and then uh, what we do what we add is the focusing on the breath and the breathing which also a actually enables and and this is another thing that uh, uh, I told you briefly before we started that we are we've chosen uh, to go to therapists first so our first customers would actually be therapists that work with people who will experience a lot of stress yeah and in that way we can we can um, uh, give a build a better device uh, that we know that that will have the credit of therapists using it and and giving us feedback and and uh, giving us support from from what comes from their uh, clients. Uh, so I think there's a few reasons um, to do that, as far as I could tell. But I'd I'd be curious to kind of hear them from you. I have my own guesses. <laughs> yeah. So we we decided, you know, in terms of business. Uh, it's very difficult to uh, uh, to go to consumers. The customer acquisition costs are very high. Uh, it's very difficult to find investment investors that would believe that you can go consumer because becoming a consumer brand is very very difficult. Yeah, really takes takes a lot of money. It takes a lot of effort, uh, and not everybody makes it. And Agreed. and we see, and, and and that's so that's the business uh, side of it. And then comes the the clinical side of it is if if. You know, if we ha have a, a, a team of tens or hundreds uh, or a thousand or, or thousands of, of therapists using this device, the, the, the data that they can give us in terms of what works best, you know, like like what we call in the industry, uh, um, like a design side, a, a beta side or, or um, design partners, uh, having therapists as design partners for this uh, uh, would be amazing. And then when we, we will develop a, a device that when we do go to consumer, it will already uh, have a lot of uh, validation uh, behind it and a good product flow. Um, and also, you know, the, the therapist can help mitigate, uh, 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 you know, the device to the client. So if I, there's always the chance that if I sell, and we know it also from other colleagues, if we sell such a device to users, then they use it a few times and then and then they forget to use it or they you know it, it they put it somewhere and they don't they don't use it as much this can happen uh, uh, and so with a therapist when it's part of therapy it has a different it has a different framework for the uh, client for the person using it 
and and then we will have the time to develop this envelope uh, for when we go to consumer. So, um, uh, an en a product envelope that will um, uh, help carry the person and and uh, using the device and going through the course of the treatment, etc. So it seems like there's a few things going on. One is you're trying to validate it clinically, uh, and you can do that because you've got a bigger data set. Another one is you're trying to save money as opposed to just going direct to consumer, which we all know that costs a lot. And so you don't have to do as big of a production run. You don't have to do the same kind of marketing and you know consumer uh, sales efforts that you would normally have to do. Um, I mean, you're selling you know therapists and because you yourself are a somatic therapist. You're probably pretty linked into those communities, I would think, in your area, which probably helps with that as well. So that that little makes sense. So lower cost of acquisition, better clinical data. But then you talk about the envelope, and that's where I'd like to understand it because I feel like that's I'm not fully sure what you mean by that, but it, I'm sure everything else has made sense. So I'm kind of curious. So so first first of I I am a somatic therapist, and then we have a clinical director who is a psychotherapist, oh, cool. and we're actually. Actually, I'm, uh, we, we, we're going to psychotherapists because a lot of them uh, use MBSR. They're licensed. Uh, uh, they, they work with a myriad of, What's MBSR? of people. It's MBSR, mindfulness-based uh, stress. Got it. MBSR, Got it. MBC, MBCT, mindfulness-based cognitive therapy. Got it. I'm sorry, I uh, shouldn't Look, use jargon. But, it's all right. I use um, acronyms too at work, and then I confuse other people. And <laughs> yeah. They'll yeah. either pretend they know what I'm saying or they'll confront me on it. <laughs> so. uh, yeah, most people won't confront you. They'll just detach and they'll lose you. So, uh, And then you're by yourself and you don't even know it. Um, so, so uh, um, was I? Um, so your partner yeah, is a so, psychotherapist. So okay. Psychotherapist. So psycho going to psychotherapists and also li other licensed therapists as well. So. Uh, but they have to be licensed, so they have to be, you know, they have to be approved. They have to be, you know, we have to see that they, they fill out this application form, uh, and we talk to them so we can see that that you know that that uh, they're the real thing because uh, there are some people, you know, who who call themselves therapists, but I don't know where they went to school, what they learned, <laughs> etc. Especially in Israel, I don't know how it, in the U.S. it's much more organized, but in Israel, yeah. anybody can call themselves a psychotherapist. Well, we have like, I guess we have like TV therapists like Dr. Phil, where you're like, where did that person get their credentials? But please don't sue me, yeah. Dr. Phil. <laughs> <laughs> we, we don't want to get into uh, <laughs> into that. But yeah, uh, so yeah. so yes, so so uh, and then you ask it. I wanted to <laughs> I forgot to answer your question. I did it again. I'm sorry. Um, but basically we, uh, um, uh, validation, lowered in, uh, uh, customer acquisition. Oh, product envelope. You yep, asked about the product envelope. So, okay. So today, uh, you go to a therapist, um, and they have several tools. Uh, the tools that we're talking about are tools with breathing. Breathing is, is, is something that, that the client can use, uh, very easily in their daily lives. There's a there's a myriad of tools that they can use, but breathing is something that's always accessible uh, to you. Uh, albeit, it's difficult to use because it's uh, it's a sense that kind of a for a, a, a thermal a femoral, femoral, It's difficult to sense. Ephemeral. It. It's only so, there for a little bit. Uh, well, it's difficult to sense. You know, okay. we, we have you know, it's, our, our brain is wired to to have a lot of sense in our hands, in our face, in our tongue, uh, in our feet. But most of the body is quite quite dim for it, so it's the, the breath is always there. Yet it's difficult <laughs> to use it. Bless you. Thanks. <laughs> the breath is always <laughs> the breath is always there. Yet it's difficult to use it. Uh, um, so what this is what the device helps with. Now the breath. There are many exercises that one can do with the breath. There's the world of mindfulness, uh, which is using the breath as an anchor for for getting back into the body, getting back into the moment, getting back into yourself. And then there's breathing exercises like deep breathing, uh, diaphragmatic breathing, prolonged exhalation, the, this world. And the therapist can uh, have control of, decide which of these uh, 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 he is going to prescribe to his client. And he doesn't want to confuse them. And this is something that we learned recently from one of our advisors, who's a 
not only a clinical psychologist is also um, head of the uh, one of the clinical uh, of the clinical department in Bar Ilan University in Israel cool. and he's also a, a researcher he has a, a big lab for psychopathology and he studies mindfulness as as a, a, a therapy for different pathologies and also for for non-pathological circumstances for example uh, p- uh, using it with police officers t- teaching mindfulness to police officers who are dealing with with the uh, uh, daily uh, uh, population that has a lot of conflict it's actually in the old city of jerusalem so i'm sure you follow the news and you know that jerusalem is probably the most fought over real estate in in the whole world i mean that's you and, can follow history and know that <laughs> sure so it's not only contemporary but historical as well so th- so they are th- these policemen are there in this line, uh, uh, dealing with 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 so many diverse populations that want to st- that want this you know to, to stay there and live there, so you have ultra orthodox religious people on the one hand, and you have uh, 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 Palestinians from East Jerusalem that so high conflict, and they he did he did a research study with this population of police officers uh, applying mindfulness. Uh, to their work, so they practice mindfulness, and that, and and that gives them a bit of space between what they feel and reality, so they can say, okay, the fact that I'm now getting filled up with anger or getting filled up with fear, and normally I would maybe go for my gun, I would go for my nightstick, or I would, you know, I would. They have a using mindfulness. They have a gap where they have another uh, like a. Um, another opinion inside you can say like wait do i need to do i need to go for that action now do i need to go for that reaction so that's what mindfulness uh part of what mindfulness um gives you is this space of making another choice between what you feel and how you act. it almost sounds like time to um, think is, is like another way to put it i would say it's, it's internal time you know how sometimes you would be relaxed and you would feel okay i i have Thing, I feel in control of what is going on in my mind. I feel focused. I can reach this memory. I can reach this data inside. I can apply. So, and then you have, I would say you have more internal time. And th- that would be in a similar way. They would, the, they, they would have time. In reality, it may not hinder them from having time, but they have more awareness of what's coming up. And then they can control it on the go they can change it on the go or they can use the energy if they need it if it's a real threat you know if it's yeah. a real threat and that you know this also pertains to to uh, american police for example you know there's so much in the news in the la- la- last years about about um excessive uh, violence and uh, uh by by police officers towards the uh, uh, black population etc um and, and you know how they they used to do i don't know and it's natural it's natural for people to identify people by by uh, uh categorize them by by uh, certain uh, um stereotypes and these stereotypes are are biases that we all carry inside and then when you when you practice mindfulness you practice having a bit more control over the stereotyping so you have like okay they are Arab or they are black or they are uh, they look dangerous you know they look they reach for their pocket but maybe I have an, another fraction of a second that I can look at what's coming out of that pocket before I pull out my gun and shoot so you know I'm not a police expert so I I, I don't want to I mean I don't know exactly how you know what, what what kind of instruction what kind of training police officers get in there but I'm just using it as as a as a proverb as a as a allegory yeah. Uh, if I'm using that word right, for what I'm trying to talk about. Um, so, I, have, uh, I was going to say, I have a cousin who um, is an emergency medical technician and then also was a firefighter for a bit. And I guess when he was going through firefighter training, he was saying that they did the police training in, in the same facility and he would overhear some of the stuff they would say, and he kind of blames the training for a lot of the issues that the American police at least mm-hmm. have. Because one of the things he said he heard is, and I'm not a police expert either, I'm just, this is all conjecture, but he said, um, you know, every day could be your last, right? It's like something they emphasize for them. And, you know, any any day could be your last one, you know, which 
emphasizes the fear and, and I think almost amplifies the opposite response to what you're talking about. But Which I think, like you know, in that term, more likely to grab their gun. <laughs> but if yeah, that's one thing, but if I hear that in another way, you can hear it also as uh, uh, some police could be could be that a bigger problem for police officers is that they become, you know, if they travel the same neighborhood again and again and nothing happens, then they become a little bit more, re a little bit relaxed. And so they they put it into their mind. Stay alert, stay alert, stay alert. So with that stay alert you are right that it, it may need another layer of stay alert but don't lose your mind don't lose uh, uh, your sense uh, uh, your senses yeah uh, don't be over over alert or, or or you can be alert but then you if you have that that other layer that i was talking about that this is what they people get trained in mbsr in mindfulness uh, based uh, uh, mbi is mindfulness based interventions so it's the same you know we took a police because it's a uh, it's a um, very uh, dramatic. Uh, it's a dramatic uh, um, uh, allegory, but yeah. example. Yeah, sorry, not allegory. Dramatic yeah. example, and then and then. Uh, uh, but it's in our daily lives, right? Somebody says something to us that 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 you know feel that makes us that insults us that, that we we choose to get insulted or we get insulted, and then we uh, and then they say, okay, wait. I can either I can either swallow the the insult, I can uh, I can um, react to it immediately. I can uh, uh, or, or I can process it inside for a while and see you know with a mindful like okay these are my feelings these are my emotions this is what I feel now this is what so maybe maybe this is what they're feeling so you have. A, a, a bit a few more tools where you can just uh, uh, sus, sus, uh, suspend reality for a moment and 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 make a better choice and this is what you practice so you practice in mindfulness you practice the awareness of the breath is what grounds you and helps you stay grounded and then awareness of what you're feeling and sensing in your body uh, uh, helps you process uh, 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 the motion outside of things so you can let the emotions run through and do what the emotions like to do, where you pause your mind from creating more emotions. You pause your mind from creating more trouble by saying, ah, da, 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 You pause that, you let your emotions process, and then you can react more sensibly. So um, it almost sounds like so, it's grounding you as a you know, user of the device. So using so what what the device does it it actually helps with the grounding part of it. It helps you with the grounding and and uh, you know some some of the users in our pilot and we we have a, a new pilot out. Uh, uh, we're doing many trials these days and uh, and many and many people use the device to actually uh, be able to focus on their work. They work in an open space. There's a lot of noise. They they turn on the device and then they are able to quiet down and connect. So it helps not only with stress, it helps also to focus, which is very interesting. I have a nice story for you in a second. Nice. Um, but uh, just going back uh, uh, to the question about envelope, product envelope. So yep. I we have still want to understand that concept. <laughs> we have breathing, we have breathing exercises where they are used or rela relaxation techniques that are used to reduce the symptoms. Uh, uh, reduce the activity of the uh, of the sympathetic uh, nerve auto uh, nervous system, the sympathetic branch of the autonomic nervous system, and raise the activity of the parasympathetic, the calming uh, branch of the nervous system. So there's uh, uh, um, there's there's like we have the sympathetic system that gets us going when 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 we feel stressed. This is what starts to rise the sympathetic system. You know, our our, our mouth dry. Uh, uh, our, our, our digestion stops, uh, uh, blood uh, gets sent into, into the extremities so we can uh, act uh, uh, fast. And then, and then the parasympathetic system kicks in. That says that gives the body another uh, instruction. It tells it, oh, okay, you can, you can rest and digest. It's another way to call it. You can, uh, <laughs> it, it, danger, is, danger is over. Now you can, you can uh, uh, start relaxing again. Yeah. And, and, and so 
once you identify that you're getting uh, hyper excited about something and you start doing deep breathing, prolonged exhalation, um, uh, diaphragmatic breathing, there's many exercises or box breathing where you do uh, four inhales, four hold, uh, four seconds exhale. All these breathing exercises, they're another thing that a therapist can prescribe to their client. And it really depends, it depends on who the client is and on to, uh, as to what uh, uh, prescription they will get. Uh, uh, and I don't, I, I can't speak for psychotherapists, I can speak for myself uh, intuitively saying that if you can, if you want to do this extra mile and say, I want to get more mindful, I want to be able to uh, uh, be more uh, uh, to accept what is happening within me, and and then and then I can act from a different space. Whereas the breathing exercise is saying, I want to control what is going on inside me. I want to lower my my the, the, the felt stress in this moment. So these are two different prescriptions, and the, the, and actually, our our clinical advisor, uh, uh, our our scientific advisor. Uh, the, the Danny Choresh, the, the head of the uh, clinical department in Barlan, he says you should not mix the two. If you tell a person, observe your breathing, but if you need to, you can slow it down, you take him out of observing and accepting into the controlling, oh, and you confuse him, and you confuse him. It was also super interesting for, for us. It's like, no, but wait a minute. What if we... Okay, so they observe, but they still nervous, so they can lower. It says, yeah, 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 but but you get confused. You confuse yourself when you when you do that. So um, the only influence should be subconscious by that way of thinking, like rather than conscious. It's the fact that there's like you can you can if you focus your mind on the here and now and your body, and accept whatever sensations are going through, and not tagging, not reacting to them you're you're that's you're not creating more stress and then you're just processing what is what is going on and also you're you're in you're inside you're inside uh, life you're inside you're not trying to stop something i'm not saying one is better than the other and actually i use uh, 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 both in in different times uh i'm still learning this but w what i'm what uh, what i'm saying is that that um uh, a device like ours, if it uses the breath and it can be used either for mindfulness practice or it can be used to lead the client into a deeper breathing, into a, a type of breathing that will help them reduce their stress symptoms in, in that moment. Um, and then um, a therapist, like like I can put all this logic into the device and I can put a lot of other things. You know, I know exactly how the person is breathing every moment. So I can use this data in order to, to give them uh, uh, inst uh, different instructions. I can uh, uh, give them different insights. I can, uh, uh, we, when we get smarter, we will be able to, to you know, to, to tell, to, to give them spe special exercises. So, um, so, so I have a lot of data, but I want to, I want I, 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 um, uh, I don't know what to do with it in the moment until I start putting it in the hands of professionals who will be able to tell me, who will be able, this, this is going back about me, but about us, about yeah, our sure. device, but they are also able to tell their clients how to use this device. It's a more, it's a more stupid device at the moment. Uh, and then they will tell their, prescribe their clients how to use this device uh, uh, better than what if I put something into the device at the moment, automatic. So this envelope at, at the moment, the therapist will create this envelope. They will, or- or so envelope um, is just the use instructions to, to go back to the original question. It's it's training them and it's prescribing them what they need, how what would work best for them would it be deep breathing or would it be mindfulness practice? It's how to use, they will be able to tell them how to use their breath. They will be able to get their feedback. They will be able to give them different instructions if they need to, which a device, it will be more, it will be harder for a device to do that. Interesting. And so, and so 
it's like in the future we'll be able use. to do it Pardon? so the envelope is like the scope of use of the device for that particular patient at that point in time exactly okay scope of use yeah yeah makes sense. i'm sorry you're asking you you you're very good at putting it in one sentence and i'm very good at making a whole story around nah, it, that's all good we're just talking <laughs> i think that's that's the dynamics of things yeah. um and yeah i i, I anytime you want to you know when you want to take it another direction just let me know i you know i i feel i have a lot of uh, information i want to share uh but this no worries you know, if, you, if you want me to share different information i started talking about our product trials yeah and i and I, and I'll, I'll, I'll let you talk <laughs> i glommed on to a few things no, no, that you said no, no. there but so one of the things i was i was hearing and i i you know again i don't need to you know take it too far a different direction but and this is like one of the few episodes I've done where I actually have to, to stop at a certain point, which is frustrating because I want to keep talking. But um, I, it sounds like the device right now, and this kind of goes back to our last conversation too, you call it a stupid device, but I think what you mean is it just mimics the patient's breathing. It doesn't have the ability to, um, and maybe patient's not a right, maybe user's a better word, I don't know. The... Um, but anyway, uh, it mimics the person using the device's breathing, um, and it just does that every time, where it sounds like maybe there's some projected use cases that might be a little different. In, in my naive brain, I'm thinking maybe you'd want to phase, you know, adjust from the breathing. So the same way, you know, we're having microphone phase issues and we're setting up, maybe you want to have the device, you know, vibrate like a little bit faster or a little bit slower in order to attempt to influence the patient's breathing in one direction or another. I don't know, is that what you anticipate or is it is it a little different than that? No, I think you hit it spot on. Uh, there's so many options and people are so diverse and and breathing, I uh, the other day I, I thought about it. It's like uh, using such a device is like using the air conditioning. Okay, you're, you're too hot now. You start the air conditioning and say, mm, this is too cold. And you start lowering it down a little bit. Oh, this is perfect. <laughs> then after a few minutes, you say, okay, I want to put it on thermostat or I want to turn it off. It was too much. So it's really about how you feel right now. And then what do you want to uh, get out of that? Like, and, and so a device like this would we really need to be a very smart air condition. And at the moment, uh, we, we, we want, uh, uh, like the uh, the therapist would be much better at operating the the remote control than the than the air conditioning going automatically. Oh, interesting. Um, but but with time, we'll be able to implement uh, uh, thermostats, if you will. Of uh, okay, now the device turns on by itself, and now we, it feels that the person has the stress level has lowered. It can turn itself off. It will learn a lot. So, what inputs um, and outputs does the therapist have access to with your current trials? So we, uh, uh, our, our current trials, uh, uh, the therapist and the client would get a summary of, of how much they uh, use the device, uh, uh, what, what, the, what kind of results they had from the device, and like the, if they fill out their daily questionnaire, uh, short questionnaire, they'll be able to fill out a few details. And then I'll get a map at the end of the week showing them uh, their stress levels, showing them when they use the device, how they use the device, uh, and then they'll be able to get a kind of a bird's view, uh, bird's eye view. Of, okay. Of, uh, but to go back to the air conditioner their... analogy, it sounds like the therapist's control right now is either turn it on or don't to the patient. So the therapist is like, you know, either enable it or don't wear it. No, but they can say, no, but they're going to also say, use it, use the, the fact that it's reflecting your breathing uh, in order to be present and accept what you're going through yeah. to practicing a, a, a mindfulness uh, yeah. activity. And or they can say, use it to prolong your breath, use it for deep breathing. First of all, they can use it to teach, right? They can put a device on and say, you know, you when you breathe, the device will vibrate as long as you breathe in. And then when you breathe out, it vibrates as long as you breathe out. So they yeah. can use it to teach them in the clinic and then they can send them home with a device. And they say, when you get stressed, just do the same thing that we did in the clinic with the device. Yeah. And they teach them their specific technique, not my technique, not a generic technique. They teach them their specific technique that the person doesn't have to choose from 20 uh, uh, <laughs> techniques, many, many apps today. They give you such a great menu. They say we have thousands of exercises and thousands of meditations. Like, who wants thousands of meditations? You know, it's, <laughs> <laughs> I, want, I want the one that would suit me most. 
So that's why I have the therapist. The therapist will say, what suits me most to practice right now? Later on down the line, in a year or two years, the device will get smart enough and then it will be able to offer you a couple of, of, of things to choose from based on what you are experiencing now, right now, who you are, what you filled out on the intake questionnaire, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, that makes sense. I think that's the... I think, yeah. I think I maybe glommed on a little bit too much to the air conditioning analogy, thinking you had like frequency controls or something like that that the therapist had available to them at this point. But it sounds like that's not the case. You're, you're more talking about the envelope as you described it earlier. Right. It's like a, a, um, a user, a user journey within yep. the, within the, using the device, lowering their stress levels, getting better, uh, healing, etc. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. That's awesome. So, um, can I, I, you don't have to answer this if you don't want, but like how many of these are out in trials right now? Well, we have a few dozens. Cool. Uh, that are out. We are doing trials with individuals, so they nice. they they come they come to our offices. Uh, they they fill out quite a few questionnaires to see that they're eligible. Uh, they come to the offices. They try the device, and if they like it, they take it home. Ninety five percent take it home, uh, and then they experiment with it for a couple of weeks and fill out questionnaires, uh, and we get this data and we collect this data and and we have. I'm proud to say we have users who do not want to return the device. <laughs> we have users who are who are very happy. Has anybody just um, offered you money for it? Been like, I'll pay you any amount, you know, yeah. like a thousand dollars here. <laughs> I don't know if any amount. I don't know any amount, but yes, people have offered. Can how can I purchase? Can I buy it now? Can I keep it for a long while longer? Can I this? Can I that? So this is this is this is very very good. Uh, and then we are doing uh, we we are using we're doing trials with therapists in Israel. We're doing trials with therapists outside of Israel in the U.S. Cool. Uh, and and we um, and we are also going with companies. So we're going into companies uh, to their uh, web centers uh, and getting them to have their users try uh, um, uh, the device uh, for a couple of weeks. And, and if they like it, you know, we get an LOI from them, like uh, uh, that that they will want to purchase in the future when we do go into market. Letter of intent for people listening. But exactly. Yeah, okay. So what Sorry. what types of companies? No worries. Um... Well, we're going for for high tech companies uh, that they are okay, similar. So this would be... uh... Sorry, I didn't mean to interject, but no. I was going to say this would be like when I when I used to work at SpaceX, they had like a massage room where you could go and get a massage during the day to help you relax as an employee. This would be like a an employee amenity, but it's not like these are companies that are selling you know mental wellness. These are companies that just have employees that they want to be mentally well. Right. Well, it, it's a good question because we don't know yet completely. Uh, uh, we will probably join up also with wellness companies that that are uh, uh, as a third party, as a provider for them, uh, because it's easier. They're already in the market. They're already uh, yeah. catering for these companies. Seems like a valid uh, but for now, we're also. Do yeah, for sure. Uh, but for now, we are uh, uh, we're also doing these ourselves uh, uh, until we get to a level where we can also access uh, larger like uh, uh, providers who would want to uh, use us. Uh, we need to get evidence, 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 evidence. Yeah. It's now everything is about evidence. Um, and, and yeah. yeah, and, and I, so I have, I, I want to have, I want to share a story about one of our uh, trial participants. So sure. I don't know if you're ready for it now or. No, or absolutely. I got about 10 later. minutes left. <laughs> Let's not go into it. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so uh, uh, one of the users in our trial, one of the people that came uh, came to us uh, uh, to try the device, he's been recently uh, uh, he's been divorced uh, uh, for for a while. He has a ten year old kid, a daughter, uh, and his wife uh, uh, was raising the daughter, uh, and he would come uh, uh, once a week, twice a week uh, to see her, spend time with her, but she wouldn't she wouldn't go home with him. And then after a while, he realized that he wanted to to, uh, to take more of the load, to share more uh, time with her, that she stays with him as well, and to do a joint custody. But he was afraid that that how his wife would go, would take it because it's a big change. Uh, so uh, he he didn't want to go to lawyers, uh, and and he didn't want to uh, go to court. So what he took upon himself was to create um, an agreement that she 
that she might agree to, and then he would write the agreement himself and take it to her uh, uh, with all the details and visitation times and schedules and and all the you know the financials and, and everything that has to do with that. Um, so he made an appointment with her, and then he 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 said to write it down. He started our trial um, maybe a few days earlier than that than that episode. He sat down to to write this agreement, but every time he would he would try to write it, he would get uh, uh, he, he would get uh, um, uh, uh, how do you call it emotionally flooded because he would start worrying what would ha- what if she doesn't accept it, and and what does it mean to be a father to a ten year old daughter? He hasn't you know, you know she has to live with him. He has to to father her. It's not just visiting uh, a couple of hours uh, uh, twice a week. Uh, financial situation, what kind of, wh- how it would affect his finances, etc. So he he wasn't able to complete this this uh, agreement to write. And then he saw the, the device on our table. These are his words, I'm not embellishing. He saw the device on the table, he took it, he put it on himself, and then he was able to start writing. And every time he would uh, 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 start feeling flooded, he would go back to the vibration. It's always vibrating with the breath in the background. Uh, he would go back to the vibrations and come down and he would be able to start again or to, to continue. So cool. with, with the device, he was able to regulate what we call professionally regulate his emotions so he could take care of the thing that he really, really wanted to do. And then, of course, it has a good, good ending. Uh, 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 he, uh, uh, so he met with her. She agreed to, to what he wrote. Uh, the daughter he now now comes to him twice a week or three times a week for uh, uh, um, not two like half of the week she stays with him, uh, and he's a father. Uh, so, it's, nice. um, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, it's a really touching story. It's uh, I'm like yes, this is this is what I want. This is this is the kind of things that I want to get uh, uh, as as a person. Like, so. Yeah, and that makes you feel good about having worked on it. That's that's great. Yeah. I mean, you know, to yeah. just to know you could enable someone to, you know, get their kid back. <laughs> that's that's wild. Yeah, and you know, this is a this is a dramatic episode. There's many many much smaller dramas uh, that people write us about in in their reports, and uh, you know, being able to concentrate better, to do their work better, to relax. I mean, any anything like that is, you know, it's. Anytime somebody managed to uh, reduce their stress levels or managed to do their work better, that's that's a gain. So that's awesome. Um, yeah. So for people that I guess want to try this out, um, is there a list they can get on, or what's what's the best, I guess, action that like someone listening that says, "Hey, maybe this is for me," can can take to you know get a hold of an Anicca at some point in their life. Okay, so cu- currently we are taking uh, on therapists. Uh, yeah. We have a, a page on our website that has a link uh, to an application form. Uh, so uh, they can um, fill out their details. And, and if they're eligible, you know, the things I described before, uh, uh, they, they, you know, they get a device for a few weeks to try out. And if they like it, they, they, they order one. We should be in the market by uh, quarter or second quarter of Sweet. 23. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, they're trying it, and if they like it, they they uh, uh, they buy it, and then they're uh, when once it's out, they will get it. And of course, they get all the training from us and everything. That's uh, really cool. So, and, if you know therapists that might want to try this, it sounds like that's the action. Maybe our listeners, or if you yeah. are one, <laughs> that's if you're a therapist, if you are one, if you're in therapy and you, and you know and, and you want to get your therapist uh, interested in it, that's also an option. Um, and yeah, uh, well, like like if you're if you're a clinic, if you, uh, you know if you know a clinic, all these places the, uh, uh, that we want to do these trials with and and, and start marketing. Um, yeah, and and for anything else, you can just write us uh, on the website and and uh, also to my email, probably have it on the uh, on um, in the video. So uh, yeah, I can um, I can put that in on the there. details. Yeah, and you can just write me and just tell me anything. Sweet. Uh, and then I, I want to ask about production logistics, but maybe that's another episode since both of us have meetings to get to pretty shortly here. <laughs> yeah, let's do another episode. <laughs> yeah, sounds good, Ida. All right, well, this has been a pleasure. Thanks for coming on. I really appreciate it. And uh, let's uh, let's maybe do this again soon. I'd be curious 
to hear where things are like around Q3 once you start shipping those things in higher volumes. Q2 of 23. I get confused, so I hope I wasn't the... You said Q2, uh, but I said Q3 because I'm thinking okay. another quarter after. Cause... <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, no, I wasn't sure. Maybe I made a mistake. Spencer, it was a real pleasure. Thank you very much for this opportunity to talk to you and to your listeners. You know, thanks for coming on. It's a pleasure as always.